I know that I've talked about it in the past, but um, the Ram Rev kind of caught my attention when they first announced it. And I did place a pre-order because I was just like, ah, you know, it's a hundred bucks, it's refundable. If I change my mind, it's, you know, who cares? Not a big deal. Um, but I did place a pre-order just because I felt like, you know, there's a pretty good chance I will want it. And I placed that pre-order the day it was announced because I thought, you know, I want to get in early on this. I, in the past, I've procrastinated. I was like, ah, I'm not really sold on the Cybertruck. So I waited a couple of months after the announcement to pre-order. And then I realized, wow, I'm a million behind in this pre-order list. Um, which, as it, as it turns out, I have decided that I don't want the Cybertruck now because, you know, it's just... At the price point they announced it, maybe, maybe I would have considered it, but now that the price has gone up 20K, I can't see myself paying that for the Cybertruck. So, um, I did jump in on the Ram Rev early, and you know, through, through a lot of research and consideration, I basically backed away from it. I said, you know, a Ram, I've been decently happy with my Ram in the past. But um, I'm not convinced that Ram knows what they're doing when it comes to electric, just like Ford. And I have learned firsthand Ford does not know what they're doing with electric. So I don't want to do that again with Ram. I don't want to waste a bunch of money to come to find out it's not really that great. On paper, the truck sounds amazing. But in practice, will it be? And, you know, people can, people can review it and test it and show us and maybe I just won't be one of the first ones to get it, but if it turns out to be good, then maybe I will get it. Who knows? Um, wow, traffic is just not moving today. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that. That's where we're at with the Ram Rev. Still undecided, still not sure, kind of leaning toward no on that one. Um, but Ram also announced about two months ago um, the new Ram Charger, which is kind of the same thing, kind of not. Now, when I heard about it, um, I thought that, oh, it's just, a, it's just a hybrid. You know, Ford's had their hybrid for a while. They've had a lot of issues out of their hybrid. And, you know, I considered it once upon a time, and I was like, eh, after hearing about experiences and people saying, you know, this really sucks, I'm no longer interested in the Ford hybrid. Um, so when they announced the Ram Charger, I kind of expected it would be a hybrid, and I was not interested. Based on how other things have been going, I don't want any kind of V6 truck. I don't want that. Um, maybe, I mean, even with Ford, with the twin turbos, I don't want a twin turbo truck because their, um, their V6 three liter has been notorious for timing chain issues. I don't want that either. Um, if I'm gonna buy a truck, it needs to be a V8, a diesel, or some combination of something that makes it powerful. So, that brings me to the Ram Charger. Um, I, I, I kinda just blew it off in the first announcement. I was like, it's just a hybrid. I don't want it. It's dumb. Well, um, someone that I watch on YouTube uh, got hands-on with one the other day and he was showing it off and it looked really nice. Now I give it that. It looked great. But um, when he started talking about powertrain, he said it had a 92 kilowatt hour battery. And I was like, wait a second. Why does it have such a big battery if it's a hybrid? So I did some research. It's not. <laughs> yes, it has a gas engine. That gas engine does not have a transmission. It is not tied to the wheels in any way. The power does not come from that gas engine. I guess technically the power comes, that's a different story. Um, so the truck is fully electric. It, it has a dual motor electric setup um, with a 92 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, they're promising about 200 miles of range on that 92 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's not great. Um, compared to other electric trucks on the market today, that's not even in the running. I mean, I guess it's like a standard range lightning so at 92 kilowatt hours to get that low mileage it must not be very efficient why are we slamming on the brakes car <laughs> it must not be very efficient but uh, in the ram charger it does have a v6 engine that runs a generator 
and that generator charges the battery pack at 150 kilowatt peak performance. Um, and that's all the engine does. It does not provide power to the wheels, which is a huge change to me because that was why I didn't want a hybrid. Um, if that engine only runs to provide power to the battery, I think that's a better setup overall. And they're promising 680 miles of range, gas electric combined on a full tank of gas. And at that point, you could just stop and fill up your gas and continue driving. You don't have to find a fast charger. You don't have to deal with any of that if you don't want to, but you can if you want to. The truck does peak out at 150 kilowatt on a fast charger, so it's not the fastest charging truck they've got. It's definitely not gonna be 350 like the Ram Rev, but it has a gas engine that's gonna keep you going at 150 kilowatt while you're driving. I like it. I like the idea. Um, now, obviously, that doesn't discount the fact that I've already ordered a Ford F-350 dual rear wheel diesel. Um, it doesn't discount the fact that, you know, the Ram Charger can't tow a fifth wheel camper. The Ram Charger is designed to 14,000 pound towing capacity. It has a 2,000 and something payload capacity, which is crazy. Um, it, it, it is in three quarter ton territory. I mean, it has a 10,000 GVWR. Um, that's, we're talking F-250 Ram 2500 territory in a, what is supposed to be a 1500 electric truck. I'm okay with that. All that sounds great with me. So, um, where do I go from here? I, I don't know. Um, they're not actually going to start making these Ram charger trucks until early 2025. I kind of expect Ford to give me my super duty by the end of this year, 2024. So obviously I have every intention of buying it for now. Um, and I think the main thing was I was buying the Super Duty. I want a big heavy duty truck. I want something that I can do a lot with. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to buy that RV and do some traveling. And you have to have a fifth wheel truck, truck that can haul a fifth wheel to do that. So the Super Duty is kind of where it's at. Do I plan on keeping the fifth wheel and doing that for the rest of my life? I don't know. Right now, the tentative plan, if I even go through with it, is that I want to buy the F-350 dual rear wheel. I want to buy the fifth wheel that I've had my eye on for a few years. And I want to do another around the country trip, but a lot slower this time. Go visit places that I, you, you know, got the chance to go through, but really didn't get the chance to stay and visit. I want to go do all that again, but in a fifth wheel this time. And six months later, when all that's done and I'm back to normal and back home, Will I sell the fifth wheel? Maybe. And at that point, do I need the dual rear wheel truck? Not really. So then we can start talking about maybe the Ram Charger. It's all up in the air at this point. No definite plans either way. Right now, the plan is I'm gonna buy the F-350 dually and maybe get the camper. We're still, it's all, we'll see how it plays out. Um, I'm kind of, I'm waiting for the best possible deal here. I'm not going to just run, jump into this and spend a bunch of money. If I can save some money along the way and do it conservatively, I will. Um, but I'm not going to go blow my entire life savings just because this is something I want to do. So anyway, um, that's that. That's all I got for you. See you guys later. You know, I talked about the Ram charger in a previous video. The idea struck me and it was like, wow, that seems like a really good idea and I like it. I like the design. I like everything about it. Um, but I want to point out one major flaw that may be something to consider. Um, in the past, we have things, I mean, over the years, we've, we've gotten things that are for a particular purpose. For example, my phone is for a phone and my dash cam is for a dash cam and my radar detector is for radar detector and you know all these things um and when companies try to make an all-in-one dash cam radar detector whatever else it doesn't tend to work very well 
um, there, there tends to be issues with it because, you know, an, a radar detector is for that one purpose and it works great at that one purpose. And a dash cam is for that one purpose. So it works great for that one purpose. But when you take two of them and combine them into one, eh, you get a mediocre radar detector and you get a mediocre dash cam. Uh, they don't work very well together. And that's just the way things have always been. That's the way they've always worked. And very seldomly, only in the case of, say, Apple, where we got a phone and a camera and an MP3 player and all this other stuff, internet in our pocket, that was kind of the only major invention that worked exactly the way it was supposed to work flawlessly. Uh, and even then, they had their ups and downs over the years. They did have instances where battery life was just non-existent. Uh, I mean, halfway through the day, you're plugging it in because it's dead. Um, it's It's been perfected over the years. So that brings me to the Ram Charger and my issue with it. I, I think it's a great idea. I think I may probably end up getting one anyway. I do like it. Um, but at the same time, we're talking about an electric vehicle and people say, well, you need a gas backup. Well, it's got gas engine, so that's your gas backup. But it's combined and I'm afraid it may not work as well as we think it will. We'll see. I mean, it's all up in the air at this point. We will see, but who knows?